definition but you know what's the words that you feel most capture what the essence of awakening is remembering who you are returning mm. restoring to yourself finding mm. that again embodying that again even though everyone around you uh, wants to um, wants to persuade you uh, to join them in in like this false world false reality so uh, i would say in a few words that's what it is it's it's just restoring our natural state mm, beautiful beautiful hello welcome to stories of awakening and i have a beautiful guest here today eileen meyer from washington state up at the left tip of america is that right yes uh -huh. That's correct. Welcome, Welcome Ali. Thank you. Good morning to you, right? Yes, exactly. It's 9.30 a.m. here in New Zealand. Yeah, so then it's 2.30 2 here in the afternoon. Yeah, the previous day. The previous <laughs> day. You're way ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining this conversation and, and, and saying yes. And just before we hopped on, just you mentioned also like a few of my guests that you don't normally do a lot of this kind of thing so i feel really um honored really you know when people say yes and that we feel this resonance and this calling to share our voices and our stories and our authenticity and um, so i'm so grateful that you you got a yes and you decided to show up and co-create this with me so thank you thank you thank you it's a pleasure thank you beautiful and i also want to mention as well that you actually have been part of the inspiration for me creating these videos the stories of awakening because i watched the video you did with janine and a couple of other ladies and janine had posted on her facebook so there was four of you and then i watched the divine feminine round table and between watching both of those videos and, and, and also feeling this calling within myself to share my own story and share stories and our authentic voices um yeah that's really what transpired in basically stories of awakening <laughs> that's very exciting i'm very touched by that yeah so thank you and, and 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 you just mentioned before we hopped on as well how a post that i had shared had had connected to you and had impacted you and you know it's just so amazing how much we really do touch one another inspire impact from our, when especially when we're sharing or something authentic and and maybe a little i might feel a little raw at the time or a little courageous even and how much that 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 can touch each other because even just to hear somebody else say something that connects like oh yeah i knew that or you know how it relates and it's resonant and 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 i feel like as well you know in these times now we're beginning to really come into acknowledgement of that and really start to recognize that whereas previously we hadn't maybe got the technology or the conversation um, or maybe even the courage to show more of our true selves so that we could relate more on that way and be acknowledged on that way. So incredible, exciting times ahead, I, I feel anyways. And um, especially, um, you know, I'm just feeling that, yeah, even through these videos and, and social media, you know, that we really, and the more I come into my, my self-acceptance and, and authentic voice, and um, the more resonance I get to connect with you know on that level so really really appreciate um these conversations so again thank you and um, i just hand it over to you first and just say a little bit about you because really yeah i don't do any research i just kind of meet you where i meet you and we have these connections and i learn i want to learn about you through this conversation as well and your background and i just have this feeling that you have a really juicy story to share <laughs> so i really want to get into it <laughs> or if you could just just kind of give a little bit of info just a little bit now before I ask you what, aware, what awakening means for you and to go into your story. All right, sure, thank you very much. Um, 
I, I'm very excited about the work you're doing. I, I celebrate it and I encourage you. It's, it's truly wonderful. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I have been practicing being an original and it has um, been very difficult because I found throughout my life that we're kind of taught to compare ourselves with other people. And if we can't, if we don't find ourselves mirrored in other people, we get small again. And um, I've had a lot of guidance about how to, uh, how to be authentic no matter what. And, that, and it does take a lot of practice and it does take um, courage. Uh, so the, the tons of practice that I've had uh, in this area is I, I was born different. I was just a very, very different kind of human being. And of course, we don't really know that until we do start the comparison. You notice how other people are behaving and you'll say something even as a child and, and I can't tell you how many, you know, people were scratching their heads and what are you talking about? You know? <laughs> um, and it, and tr truly it sounds kind of cute right now, but as a child, and I'm sure you know this from your own experience, it, it can have a tendency to, uh, you know, reduce, lower your self-esteem because you're not getting met um, mm -hmm. uh, by, you know, back then there's no internet, you know, there's no way to connect with people really beyond um, your, your, your family, your home, your neighborhood, you know, you're not exposed to a lot of people that might be able to mirror these things about yourself. So um, I, early on, I have memories of um, being more connected to these very tall, golden, and sometimes blue, wispy light beings that would, um, <clears throat> I remember them the most um, in my bedroom, and but mostly the sandbox. We had this giant sandbox on the side of the house in Sacramento, California, and um, I would uh, visit with them, commune with these beings, and they, felt they were just my family. And then these other people that I lived with, I was kind of adapting to and getting to know and figuring out how to do this. Um, but it the was human family, you mean? What's the that? Human, the human family, you mean? You were just trying to get yes. to know the human family and how to be in a body. And it felt more natural that your family was these blue, wispy beings. <laughs> the, the wispy <laughs> tall beings, so yes. loving. They communicated to me through resonance. Um, a lot of people call it telepathy when it's when you just um, receive it inside. You know what they're saying. Um, and you know, over the years, I've I've really understood it and now explain it and articulate it more as a, a resonant communion, where mm -hmm. you just feel know what they're saying. You're, there's no thinking processes going on. And so I was still communing a lot in that way um, with these beings. And I felt like I was more, of course, like them than I was my family. I could definitely feel this, huh, where, you know, what is, who are those people, you know, as a, as a young, a uh, young girl. Um, and I remember, uh, I just, I just went, I've been going through my journals, um, because I have uh, been doing some research for an, uh, for an upcoming uh, connection with another experiencer on, on one of the videos that I'll be doing. And um, I came across this one memory that surfaced about how I used to, and I remembered it instantly when I read it. I used to uh, tell my girlfriends, one, one girlfriend, Susan, Susan Davis lived across the street from me and another girl named Dawn, who lived several blocks away, I don't remember her last name. I don't, I don't normally remember details like this, but I do remember that. And I would tell her, I'm going to, um, I'm going to come over to your house tonight. And, um, and I remember her just going, okay. 
And I would, at night, I would leave my body and go and visit her house and walk through her house. And then my friend Don's as well. And then I just remember that that was just fun. And we used to compare notes. And I you know, we're talking like seven years old, six, seven years old. And um, then the, you know, the moms uh, got wind of this and, and, you know, basically shut it down and, and said, don't talk like that. That's not real. That's not, you know, that's, that's when I started getting um, a, a lot more of the, you know, quashing what was me, what was naturally me. And so uh, I knew that these, uh, I do remember a very specific interaction where I was informed that uh, I wouldn't be seeing them so much anymore, that I needed to just kind of uh, do this thing that I was here to do. The human and, experience. <laughs> yeah. And, it, you know, there's no, there, I didn't understand that um, at all. Uh, it was sad. I do remember feeling like, what? Um, but th those are some of my earliest memories. Uh, and then I started to, um, you know, in hindsight, I can see this, track this. I started to reduce myself or pull, pull in and not be who I was. So um, I talk a lot about this in, in helping people remember who they are and find that authentic self again. There's a, there is a moment in time where we make a decision that we can't be who we are, that we have to present a face or a persona that um, people will like, especially our mom and dads, right? Um, and teachers, I remember um, studying my teachers uh, to figure out um, how to get through this school thing because I didn't, I couldn't retain data. Um, I didn't, I mean, just if I read something, it was gone. I didn't have any reading comprehension. Mm. And I guess they would probably call that a, a learning disorder um, at this point, but they didn't, they didn't have that um, terminology back then and diagnoses. So um, I remember that I used to um, study people to figure out um, what I needed to do to accomplish what I needed to accomplish because I felt they all lived in a very strange world. And I was studying them and how, how they related. I even started watching, as a young girl, I started watching soap operas. My mom didn't watch them, but I found them because I, I went, oh, perfect, I can learn how these people talk to each other. That's a terrible way to learn how people talk to each other. <laughs> I mean, I can think of better ways, <laughs> better means um, to, to understand this language. You know, of course I knew English, but it was a language I didn't understand because it was, they were not speaking truthfully. There was like, I recognized uh, as a young girl that um, there was just this, um, it was scripting it is probably a good word for it, that people were following scripts mm. and they weren't really speaking authentically and connected to one another. So uh, then I, <clears throat> I, so I just kind of shut down more and more and tried my damnedest to be what people called normal. And um, then probably in my, um, it was, yeah, it was preteen that I developed an obsession for uh, music and singing. And I absolutely had to sing, even though I, I didn't know how to sing. Um, so my mom taught me how to play the piano and um, I learned how to play the piano so that I could play the songs that I wanted to sing. And this is when these, this presence came back to me. Uh, so I went, you know, a good chunk of years that where I didn't have any sense of, of this connection with those beings. Um, and basically they, I was being coached from within, you know, as if I was in that sandbox communing with them again. And, and it was like I had a vocal coach and I heard what, what to do, how to, 
how to position my body, how to use my diaphragm. Um, and I taught myself how to sing. Uh, my first interconnected oneness experience was when I was um, probably about, I don't know, I'm guessing 12, maybe 13, when I hit a note singing and it, um, it, I just went into, to all. <laughs> there was, you know, I, I blended into everything. There was no sense of myself uh, as Eileen. Um, and I was in the uh, complete bliss and oneness. And um, I write about some of these uh, in my book. I finally wrote a book because it, uh, I just was guided that I needed to get the highlights down so that I didn't have to think so much about the past because of what was coming. Um, and it's here. Uh, but um, I, I tried to tell my religious mother about it and, um, you know, just got that blank reaction because I told her that, um, I, I told her, you're right. Can you feel it? It's here. It's all around us right now. God is love and God is omnipresent. And it's, it, this love is all around us and inside of us. And but my mom just went back to her. She read her Bible a lot and she just went back to the Bible to, oh my God, I have a crazy daughter. Now I need to read about God is love. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so there, yeah. was, there was that insanity again for me it was insanity that people weren't having actual experiences of things and they thought somebody having an actual experience was crazy and that that only happened to people back in the bible days right that's people the burning bush and you know all of these amazing experiences those were special people you know and and we're not that right that's what what you know we're taught is we're not that and so that's why um you know, and not, only, to... not only that we're not that but it's blasphemy it's the worst sin you could commit to even consider yourself as that exactly exactly that's why you were the crazy daughter and the mother had to go back to her bible and, and confess her sins <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just it, that's to, and then i'm sitting there going this is crazy she thinks <laughs> right crazy <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, fascinating world, but yeah, I totally resonate with so much of what you've shared so far. Yeah. Just can I just interlude and just ask you, what is awakening for you? What's your, you know, if you had, if you, if you could give it a definition, but you know, what's the words that you feel most capture what the essence of awakening is? Remembering who you are, returning, mm -hmm. restoring to yourself finding mm -hmm. that again, embodying that again, even though everyone around you uh, wants, to, um, wants to persuade you uh, to join them in, in like this false world, false reality. So I would say in a few words, that's what it is. It's, it's just restoring our natural state. Mm, beautiful, beautiful, mm, wonderful. Ah, I'll breathe into that. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and, and my sense as well is, is it's, yeah, it's bringing what we've held outside of us into the body. And a lot of people have been talking about this embodiment and it's become very apparent that it's, yeah, grounding it through this body. And, and that's why the acceptance that we are God and that we're part of it all is so important. So we stop creating the barriers. So it's like dissolving those barriers that we put up against ourselves and ourselves <laughs> ultimately. Exactly, and it's um, and it's we're taught that this is um, confusing and hard. It's not. It's actually the simplest thing you can do is is to return to that sense of self and. Um, I, I encourage prayer a lot, um, not necessarily what somebody else says is prayer, but developing your own prayer. And uh, I've noticed that sometimes people put up barriers against that thinking, well, oh, I'm afraid I won't say it right. It's, it's just be honest. And this is what I was taught. 
you know, from these beings um, as I got to these uh, next phases of my life, that it's all it is. And, and, I, and I know Jesus said this, uh, it's about being as a little child again. It's about that. Um, Into the, the kingdom of heaven. Yes, <clears throat> the yeah. state of honesty and innocence. Um, if we just sit down and speak what's real, uh, and they, they taught me this um, process to get, to get quickly there to that state of um, communion, and it is to speak your, your truth. What are you actually feeling right now? And that's how I start every session when I do private sessions and in groups when I was doing groups uh, in person is what are you feeling now? And then it's usually people start with a, a more superficial, I feel great, you know, I'm excited, you know, and then we, we have to breathe and then answer it again, breathe, answer it again. So you're going deeper and deeper and it starts to unravel. And then we find something that we can work with, right? Excuse me, I'm gonna take a sip. Yeah, as you take a sip, I'll just put this in as well, just for anyone who's watching this, you know, now or in the future, that um, you can do this with yourself, really, by writing it in a journal. What am I feeling? Write it down and then take a breath. Write the, uh, the line again. What am I feeling? Mm -hmm. Go deeper and go deeper and go deeper. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, and then with the voice, which is maybe it's because I'm so voice oriented um, being a singer, but they taught me that when we speak it out loud, um, we, this is a, an attunement process. So when you speak your feelings out loud, you're, you'll start to notice what your body's reaction is to it. So if you're not telling the truth or you could go deeper, your body will go, uh, no, that's not it. You know, you'll get, you'll get the responses. So then you start to speak the truth and then your body will celebrate. Yes, that's true through and through. And, and you start unpacking this with, you know, um, shadow and debris that ha hasn't been looked at or felt for a long time. But once you get through that, then you're, you can experience these moments of bliss and ecstasy. And then that's true, you know, and your body celebrates that. So your body will celebrate truth no matter what it is, even the dark stuff, even the stuff we don't want to look at say it, be truthful, and your body will go, yes, we're on our way, we're going to attune, and we're going to, we're, we're tuning to the home frequency, you know, so that we can remember and restore fully who we are. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Can, can you just go, just, I want to delve in a little bit more, or just, in just, I know you've, you've already offered a lot of insight and clarity already, but just for somebody who is like, you know, still getting a little bit kind of glitchy with the whole prayer thing in terms of what they learned in religion and the prayer that you're speaking. Can you give any more verbiage and clarification on how they can discern um, the difference? Yes, discerning the difference does come through um, actual practice. And, and this is, this is um, redirecting because of my life experience and all my training in, in watching how I moved away from myself. Um, mm -hmm. this is, uh, the practice of getting back to ourselves again, so that we can reconnect with the source of all and reconnect with the unified field and start to get data that we wouldn't normally get if we're blocked and we're not receptive. We haven't opened our vessels and attuned our vessels. So what they taught, uh, me was, um, start speaking those um, even before I do a session, I still do this. I'll, I'll just say, I am here. I choose love. And I'm willing to know the truth. I'm willing to speak the truth. I'm willing to heal. And in this moment, I feel confused. I feel like I'm not going to know how to do this. I feel afraid that I'm not going to know how to do this. But I want you to know that I am here and I know that I am in service of love. 
and I ask for your help and your guidance. And again, I feel afraid and I know that's okay. And then you just keep, it's like your prayer isn't like bowing down and saying, I'm not worthy. In fact, it's the opposite. It, it's reclaiming yourself as, as a child of, of God of source. And you're saying, I don't know what happened here. We got off track. And I, I recognize that we're off track. I recognize that I'm off track. And I'm not going to judge myself for that because I know I'm already forgiven. So I'm here to remember and I know and trust that you're going to show me and help me through this. So it's really just being honest and speaking to someone that you know, you can imagine that you're talking to a guide. Sometimes that's more helpful than source, you know. It's like, just, just talk to your angels, your guides that just really love you unconditionally. There's nothing you could say that would shock them or surprise them. Just pure love and delight. Absolute delight when, when we do show up and say, hey, I'm ready to give this a whirl, you know? And it's like, <laughs> yay, okay, you know? And, and, and the other part of that is, don't think that you can just do it once or twice and then you're gonna have this amazing experience. It is a dedicated, um, a dedicated practice. They taught me to do this same time, same place every day if possible. And um, they will start, nothing will happen usually. You know, you just show up, you do your prayer, you say, speak your truth, and then you just keep showing up and, and then resting after you're done, after you feel complete. And you will start to feel complete and you'll just rest. And pretty soon you'll feel hear a response and you'll start to be guided. And, and they did guide me from that point. Uh, this is when I had the, the full Kundalini experience when they took me through the, and, you know, how to be present and how to same time, same place show up with them but i was so I, I was speaking to a lady yesterday and she was talking about how important it is to have a daily practice so the way that's that prayer was your daily practice for some people it could be yoga or breath or meditation or whatever it is but having that consistent commitment really isn't it, it to is yourself yes yeah, it is work sure. it is work but it's not like uh work it's you know what i really want this I really want to remember who I am. Yeah. And that's the will. That's us engaging the will and saying, all right, uh, I'm here, uh, I'm ready. I'm ready no matter what, okay? Mm -hmm. We have these other choices too. We can um, continue to, to um, essentially dumb down our minds and our hearts by listening to um you know the, the news that comes at us from every angle listening to uh, and reading facebook feed and social media feeds and it's it's about balance but i would say that removing oneself from that or only giving yourself a, a small amount of time to check in what's going on in the world if you feel strong enough to do that but it's all about saying, all right, the outer world is madness right now. There's a reason why it's madness. I need to get back to the truth of who I am and reverse this or shift this. And this is what they say the shift actually is, is um, instead of outside to in, it becomes inside out so that the world we're seeing is, um, is the reflection of this reorientation that has taken place within our own individual consciousness. This is a must. 
we're not going to see anything change in that consensus reality until we take responsibility within our own consciousness. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And just to touch back to just what you, a conversation you were talking about earlier, but just, you know, I know from somebody who really did get the brunt of the religious upbringing and really inner child kind of fear of God and, and being presented a judgmental God and confusing messages. God is love and God is judging us because we have to go to confession and we have to think about all the wrong things we've done and sins and da 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 da. And, you know, and then to jump from that to you're already forgiven, you know, and that you're already lovable, you know, it, it is, it is quite a leap when, when, when that inner child has had such an indoctrination, if you like, and exactly as you said, moving away, separating from the true essence self. But when, when somebody has been so convinced of their, of their inadequacy or impurity, unworthiness, and that they have to repent for their sins, just to weave into what you just talked about with your prayer as well, to really own that as well. I just wanted to kind of, I just wanted to kind of bridge that a little bit because I love what you said, but I, I'm also feeling for those people who, who may be on such a, you know, over here pendulum swing. <laughs> how do they, how do they, how do they, you know, bridge that? And I know that's what the prayer is about to really acknowledge. Okay. And I even, you know, so I just want to say, you know, you can just say, even though I don't believe this, even though I want to believe it, but I don't know how to believe it, you know, I am open. Show me, you know, because that's really what the prayer is as well. Show me, help me see my worthiness, help me see that things can change. And it, and it is, it's just that openness, openness. And um, yeah. I, I I heard a, a, an amazing story from, from a lady I met in Bali a couple of years ago, maybe it was three years ago. And, um, you know, she said how she, she didn't believe in anything. She didn't have a religious background. She didn't have anything. But life got so intense for her that she pretty much ended up in her own fetus on the bathroom floor with nothing else in a way to probably lose because she'd lost pretty much everything she had held dear in her life. It just been kind of as, as happens. Yes. And, and she basically, for the first time in her life, went, even though I don't believe in anything, help. You know, she just opened up and then her life transformed. And now she's a past life regressionist and she's doing all this amazing work, which is a whole different trajectory than where she was. But it, 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 it's a great example. I hope to get her on at some stage and share this story because, you know, I think it's so important because the human can go, oh, why is you know, why is God doing this to us? And why is life so hard and a challenge and a struggle? And I found myself saying lately and kind of laughing, you know, not laughing, but you know, that compassion of, of, of that source of that love is going, you're not giving me any other choice. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, not, you're not willing, the willingness to listen, you know? So it's like, how intense does it have to get? Whether it's an illness, whether it's a financial loss or death in the family or earthquakes or, you know, whatever. And there's so much of that madness that you're talking about now in the world. But when we realize that it's there to help us into the willingness to open up, you know, right. to assistance and support and okay, I ain't got the, I ain't got the answers. I don't know what's been going on. I thought I knew things. I thought I knew how life was. So in a way it humbles us, you know, eventually to humble that egoic persona self into right. surrender, into openness. And then the divine, you know, or the angels, the guides will go, okay, finally, you're letting us in. <laughs> you're giving us a chance. That is absolutely right. Excellent that you brought that up because if we don't use our will to meet this presence, we will be met in some way by the outer world bringing us to our knees. We don't have to do it in a painful, negative, horrible way if we are willing and i and i'll keep emphasizing that word will if we're willing to show up in this way then we're taking care of this movement this connection that must be made now 
directly. See, we're getting back to actual versus pretend and persona and e you know, ego-based persona, a face that we put on in the world. So all of these things that we were entrained to is part of the personas, it's part of the false reality. So when we say, oh, but I was told that I would go to hell if I said this or did that, well, this is the moment where you have to find that source directly in yourself and be informed directly now. Otherwise, you're going to go with the false world. So <clears throat> this is not, I don't say these things to frighten people. I'm saying this is your opportunity in this uh, I walked the sacred Mayan fire path and I initiated as a Mayan priest, but I didn't take the title. But I uh, was very strongly guided to go in that direction. And so I, I understand through the Mayan lens as well that this timing is crucial. This 26,000 year cycle where the, the, the galactic center is broadcasting to us. There's a portal that is absolutely open and saying, we're here, just engage, just meet us, meet with this love and it will be here for you. Now, the individual has to decide, you know, it's uh, one time I brought through a message that it's, it's like you, you're, you're all going to be choosing your crazy. What's crazy? Is it crazy to go with all that scary, hurtful, painful, confusing stuff about God from other human beings who've been, it's been passed down to them and passed down to them and passed down to them. Do you want to have the experience that I, I pointed out with my mother and, and her Bible and words, or do you want to have a direct experience of it and know and come back online with your source creator? That's the choice. And, and we can choose whatever we want. There isn't going, you know, there's not, we choose our own heaven and hell. So if we're afraid and see that the, at the bottom of all of this, Mary Jo, at the bottom of this is that greatest fear. Our greatest fear is that light is going to obliterate us. And then who are we, right? If you're attached to the persona, then, then yeah, a lot of that is going to die. That is why we, we must have the dying experience, perhaps several of them, but I've had in my life the, the, the life and death cycles to where you have to die to these ideas of who you are so that you can be open enough and, and, and back to what you said, it creates the opening to where you just beg to be shown the light. And so there's a crack that happens. We don't have the, it's not all armored up you know, with all of our belief systems. This isn't about belief. It has nothing to do with belief. It has everything to do with knowing and remembering who you are. And that's done not with your mind and thinking, but as you know, through your experiences with Kundalini, that connecting experience, that oneness experience where source says, hello, this is who you are. This is just a taste for you to know you are absolutely connected to source, every single one of us. These are not special experiences for special people. This just happens to be some of us have these experiences so that we can share them with other people and say, this is what I learned. And this is what I know to be true. And it's, you're not talking at people with this stuff. You're embodying it. You're being it. And you never even have to say a word once you're embodying uh, this, this truth and this love that you are. 
and you move about in your life in that way and it has an effect on people. So it's a, it, it does boil down to choice, which, which it, does it sound crazier to connect directly with source, to, with the field of all that is, or does it sound you know, crazy to um, just stay with the world and hope it gets better, right? Yeah. It's not going to get a, a lot of what's been a lot of a lot of the ideas that are passed through this world that we've all been brought up on is finding the happiness, whether it's behind the materialism, the money, the 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 the, the way the body looks in a certain form, you know, and so often you know, exploring that, you know, people can tick all those boxes and still feel empty inside. That's right. You know, because the real searching or the real longing is for exactly what you're talking about, that deep connection to source, that deep connection to unbridled, you know, joy and love and enoughness and, and, and you know, you're not special and you are special and all is special. We're all this beautiful, special, creational field of consciousness and love and possibility. And when we learn, when we can really take back our beautiful self-esteem and, and stop denying ourselves, we can truly celebrate ourselves, celebrate all that is, and celebrate each other. Yes. Beautifully said. Yes. Absolutely. So that's what everyone has to look forward to. <laughs> that's right. It is, to me, it's very exciting. It's very exciting. It isn't, it isn't just another way. It isn't just another practice. It's setting aside everything you learned, like forget everything you ever learned and everything that you imagined about how the future is going to go and surrender in the present moment and you will be informed about what is real and what is true and who you actually are. Your actual gifts that have been suppressed, buried, because you've been, most of us, I mean, some people are blessed to be born into families where they're encouraged and seen and validated and I don't know what that's like, but um, we all have the perfect lives and the perfect unfolding for what we need. I feel extraordinarily blessed for my path. I see how completely perfect it was. Was it pleasant? <laughs> Most of the time, no. It's been a, it's been a challenging life uh, to, to step out and to start to speak my truth and then receive the judgment. Um, but having having this anchor within me and knowing what is true because I know this through and through. There is no doubt when that love fills you, that vibration fills you, it changes you and it gives you that marker so you know. So it doesn't matter what people say to you uh, because you, are, you know that can't be swayed. You can't be uh, thrown off balance because all you have to do is tune back into that vibrational marker. And they taught this to me many times too, that they said, years ago, they said, things are gonna get really weird <laughs> and, and people aren't gonna know what's up or down or what's true and what's false. And, and at the time, I, I didn't know what that could mean. That sounded really weird to me. Um, and here we are, and it's like when that when this happens, you have if you've been doing this work, it, and it's your own organic process. It's not. I'm I'm giving people the open source software. I'm giving people what I learned and was taught, the fundamentals of how to reconnect with this. And 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 then it's it's all you. Once you engage and once you, you're willing to be honest and in and, and total surrender and innocence to love, you're going to be guided and it's going to be your beautiful unfolding, exciting unfolding. But the bottom line is 
we have to be our real and true selves now. Um, otherwise, as I said before, we're just choosing to be small. We're choosing to keep, you know, uh, reciting the scripts. Of, I think I'm supposed to say this now, or I'm supposed to do that, or, you know, we're watching all these structures dissolve now. In fact, that old world doesn't even really truly exist anymore. It's only being held together because of the collective consciousness still thinks it's real and still gives it energy. But if you just are willing to in these times when I know you in New Zealand, um, you don't, you're not in the uh, lockdown anymore. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we've been out of it maybe four or four and a half weeks now. Yeah, that's great. Um, but I saw that this time when, you know, we're still, you know, quasi lockdown. Um, this is an extraordinary time to go within and to do this and to practice this. Because if you, if you can't go to a job um, and your life is not normal anymore, that's what this is about. This is what the opportunity is, is to go within. And other people are doing a variety of other things. Some people feel called um, into activism. And this is wonderful. It's not what I feel motivated to do. Um, of course, I, if I would have had the kinds of lives and generations before them of, of like the Black Lives Matter movements, um, that I would probably feel differently. I, I empathize and I feel uh, that kind of pain and I definitely support the, the raging. I support absolutely to get the rage out. And, but it doesn't have to translate to violence. Just get your own rage out in the privacy of your own home and magical things will happen if you do that. That is the mother within us all that is buried under that rage. And if we get that rage out, the mother can emerge again. And that is what I'm being informed is the return of the divine feminine, is our willingness to dig deep and to free her from all of this pain and all of this, these fake ways of being, uh, lying about who we really are. And of course it's mostly unconscious, but once you start showing up, you learn so much and you're so loved and so cared for and so guided. All we have to do is show up regularly and we'll discover that. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Mm, where do I want to go next? So you you <laughs> mentioned about your own Kundalini in '98. Is that right? Was it '98 okay. when you had this? And this is through the experiences of showing up daily in the prayer and being guided, and and this led you to, I guess, activating your energy centers or reconnecting or, as you said, restoring, <laughs> reacquaint, yeah. reacquainting yourself with your true self. And oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I, would, I do need to say something about that. I did write about this in my book because it was a very pivotal um, point in my life, obviously. Um, but getting back to what we were talking about and creating this opening, uh, I, a few weeks before that, I was raging and raging and raging because I had been in depression. I'd lost my job. I quit the band. I was in a seven piece uh, original rock band and we were doing really well, but I could not take another step further in the, you know, the, the cool rocker chick persona, right? I had a lot of fun and, and it was very creative and wonderful. A lot of great experiences through that, but I reached this point where I couldn't not be me anymore. So um, 
I had decided I was going to um, end my life. And so that's really where it began because I realized at the last moment that I was so angry and I was angry at the creator for putting me in this life and giving me all of these extremely contrasting experiences to where I, I know I had many abduction kind of experiences, ET, variety of ET um, visitations. Um, it, was it was constant and it would change me each time and it would make me, it would take me further away from the collective in my awareness. Like I couldn't, there was nobody to talk to. Yet when these things happened, it was the most real thing uh, that that I that I could experience, and it 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 contrasted with the fake world. Every time these ex I'd have these experiences, and then I'd integrate. You know, so I reached that point where <clears throat> it was too big of a gap between these two people, the one that was having these experiences and and being taken. Uh, into these other worlds and um, being taught things and remembering more and more and more. And then, okay, it's gig night. I gotta, you know, get all cute and, you know, wear cool clothes and get up on that stage and rock out. And um, most of the time it was in um, bars or, um, yeah, mostly bars. And I would watch while I was singing, people were getting more and more and more drunk and wasted and passing out and getting further away from the truth of who they were. And I'm not, I'm not a prude. I'm not saying people shouldn't drink. I'm saying that was my life, was being on these stages and loving singing. Of course, I had had a passion since an early age, it was my path. And, and then watching that what I, how could I keep participating in this? This was making people choose to go more unconscious than conscious. So that's when I said, I can't do this anymore. And I, um, I said, I won't do this anymore. And um, I'm gonna end my life because I don't see any other solution. And that's why I talk about this because I know what it's like to be on that edge where you, you cannot find your way forward. You don't know how to get out of what you're in. And that's when, if, that's when I started raging. I mean, weeping, crying, screaming. I got it all out until there wasn't anything left. And that's when I heard the voice within me. I say voice, but uh, that presence said, are you ready now? This is good, are you ready now? And I, I just said, yeah. I, I didn't know what it was, you know, I just, I just responded to it like, yep, I'm all empty. <laughs> There's nothing else here, so I'm ready. And that's when I was told, show up, same time, same place every day. And uh, so I'm picking it back up where I, I shared before. Then it moved into the full Kundalini event. And even that was, um, you know, I could talk for an hour just about that event and, and, and also talking with you because I know you've had an event of your own. Um, and I love talking to other people who've had an event. Maybe we'll have to do another call just for that. <laughs> What's that? Maybe we'll have to do another one just for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tr truly. Kund Kundalini awakening stories. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, because it does change your consciousness. It changes you through and through. And it took me many years to, to integrate that. Um, but again, it took me further away from consensus reality. 
uh, to where <clears throat> I had to get stronger and stronger in myself about being the weird one. You know, that's how I was being framed from those people in my life. So within myself, I had to, you know, frame it for myself. What is this? You know, I had to own it. I had to claim it. I don't know what you call it. I don't know what they call it. I, I searched everywhere. I did research all the time. Every time I'd have an experience, whether Kundalini or the contact experiences um, or out of body. And you go and you search the internet for these things in the when, you know back then it was books right and you find similarities but there's never anything exact when you have a direct experience you can't just go oh it's kundalini oh yeah that's what happened it's your own unique connection to source to the goddess and it's not something that you can, you can find resonance and you can find uh, similarities, but it's your own connection uh, to that, that which is. And that, that is the relationship. Those are your own kinds of definitions that you develop. Don't get your definitions from the outer world. These come within you and it's essence. It's not names and labels. Spirit is essence, and that's between you and your creator. So it's a, it's a switch, <clears throat> you know, that happens at that point where you decide, I'm going to listen from within from now on, and I'm going to grow that. I feel like I'm talking too much. <laughs> oh, not at all, not at all, not at all. I do want to dive into, into that and see, you know, because, yes, you know, you have your awakening experience. And I know for me, you know, that's when the real inner work had to happen. <laughs> and that's really just clearing out, clearing out the, the false reality, you say, or the false perceptions of self and the beliefs and all the stuff that was taken on this lifetime, other lifetimes, you know, however big we want to go with it, inner child. And that, that was the real deep dive. And, and for me personally, I had to face, you know, some of those deepest fears and, you know, in a way it had to, they had to, it's just like what you said, there's like a death to them, but like move through some of those worst fears, but having that source perspective, awareness, knowingness there with me. And at the same time, it's it's confronting and it's you know it can feel so real because that's the outer world has felt so real and we bought into it so much so it's like to to come back to the you have to move through it to realize it's all unreal it's all you know the worst fears and all, all the ways that we we left ourselves yeah to, to come back in is moving through our worst fears judgment you know what whatever the reasons that we gave ourselves up in the first place you know, it's really facing those. At least this was my experience. And, and again and again, like having another mini death, another mini death, but also on the other side, and a surrender as well. Sometimes it was just pure surrender of not giving that any more energy and not trying to avoid or dismiss or whatever it was. And then to discover on the other side, you know, I have so many stories I can share myself. I've gone, oh my God, <laughs> it was only as real as I made it. That's right. I was the one giving it the energy. And once That's I right. left, took it away, you know, I've seen the outer world just rearrange itself. That's right. Rearrange itself. And just yeah. incredible. So speak to that as well. Because, you know, I want to I want to bring out that raw realness of, of that, that it's a tough journey. <laughs> you know, it's intense. It's, it's amazing. It's blissful. It's exquisite. And it's friggin' intense. <laughs> it, it is intense. And, um, but it's, you know, it's like giving birth. I don't know if you're a mother, Mary Jo. I have, I have but, a birth, of, but uh, I've birthed many other things, but not babies this life. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> you can relate still. You don't have to be a mother, but I relate it to childbirth. Yeah. Um, yeah. In that, yeah, does it look ugly and feel painful and, oh my God, am I ever going to get through this? kind of same, you know, those same kinds of feelings. But once you have the, you experience this 
birth of more of yourself. Like, oh my God, thank you. I, I see this child. I love this child that I've given birth to, you know, as, as myself, let's say. And, and, I, and I love that, that it grew within me. It formed inside of me and I gave birth to it. And there's, there's a, a level of um, just honoring the self for that kind of attention to wherever you want to begin in the process of the gestation and then the, the final birth. It's like caring for your body, caring for this being, caring about yourself because because you know something is going to uh, emerge from you. And so there's that, that care and that attention. And it all pays off. It and, and this, this child, this, this new sense of self comes through. And then you get to integrate that and you get to practice that until, as you just indicated, until ah, the next thing that is presented. But oh my God, you start to go, oh, a gift. There's something new that wants to, it wants to take me deeper, yay. And you start to develop this, this warrior kind of spirit, like piece of cake, I can do this. I've, I've had all those other babies, here comes another baby. I'm present with it and I know I've learned if I'm present with it, it's not gonna be as painful, right? So you learn each time you go through one of these processes, but I also have to say, that we're in a time now, you know, you and I, Mary Jo, we had, we had time, you know, uh, so many of us, all the experiencers that I talked to as well. It's like, we, we've been doing this our whole lives. We, we've had, but that was just our path. It doesn't mean it's better than, it just means that this is what we intended to do. This is part of our path to prepare for this time so that we could at least begin to articulate these things that we have come through and learned and, and, and demonstrated, not just thoughts and ideas about spirituality, but the real down and dirty of spirituality, uh, the pragmatic daily uh, attention to the present moment and, and present moment prayer and, and witnessing what unfolds from that so that in these times when everything is accelerating now it's like if you resist it it gets more and more painful i mean really painful if you just accept it and and fall into this movement this accelerated energy and say i'm on board i i, I you know again like i i demonstrated with the prayer i, I feel afraid i do feel fear Admit, if that's true, admit it, because that's the truth and your body will celebrate. Yay, you're being truthful. Here we go. Yeah. Um, and thank you so, so much for sharing that little piece as well about how you really did want to end it, because I think it's really important. And, and it's an acknowledgement as well. It's part of the prayer. It's part yeah. of the, the owning of that. And, and I, I'm aware that that's happening for a lot of people right now. You know, yeah. that, that, that just being like, I want out. This is too hard. This is too difficult. I have no idea how to move through this. And right. that it's okay that that's part of it as well to yeah. find, you know, and I, I've had uh, experience like that myself of really giving myself the out in a moment of going, I can actually jump off a bridge. I literally did this and I've never given myself that choice before. Like I'd never yeah. entertained it, partly because I had, a, you know, I had some, a family member who was very up and down, suicidal and went on a bit of a journey. So it's like, oh, that's her kind of gig, <laughs> playing with life and death. But for mm -hmm. the first time, I actually gave myself the choice of going, you know, especially facing some of these um, greatest um, fears, we'll say, that would have had me before my Kundalini awakening. And they're really facing them and, 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 you know, really had me in quite a, quite a place. But what gave me some freedom in one particular instant, I remember specifically, was when I actually said, I can jump off a bridge. That is a choice. And somehow that gave me enough spaciousness to 
unplug my energy from what I was resisting or fearing yeah. or, you know, and to, to, in a way, yeah, stop the fight, stop the resistance, stop the avoidance um, and, and give me some space so that I could just refocus my energy in the direction of going, I can just relax. And, you know, if the worst comes to the worst that my imagination's going into, I can actually jump off a bridge. That is, that is, that is a choice. And I can, I can allow myself that liberation to know that I have that choice. And so in giving myself that choice, I chose to actually refocus my life in, in the direction that I actually wanted to create and what brought joy to my heart. And yeah. then as if by magic, everything else just shifted and, and, and everything resolved. And that's, you know, this one of the experiences of going, oh my God, we're so powerful. <laughs> we're so powerful, yes. you know? Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. It's incredible. But just that the whole death thing, I think is so important because we can be so you know we can have so much taboo and so much stuff clung onto that idea of death and what it means and of course religion has a big part to play in that and and of course keeping us in the in in the perspective of you know where we don't realize that we're multi-dimensional beings and that we have a multitude of experiences and etc cetera, etc cetera. so we that ego that clings to this life so desperately and then is so afraid of what's over the other side of it you know if we did decide to kill ourselves and what that would mean and da, 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 da. so there's a real psychology around all of that 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 can you know that that can really i guess not allow a beautiful relationship with with death and that death is a beautiful part of life and it doesn't mean death necessarily out of the body it may do but it's all these many deaths as you said with the with with certain ideas and beliefs and identities you know that have that have been exhausted really truly exhausted that, you know and we're that, exhausted that's why we want to die we want to die from that but if you what i learned and you know later as as it I came to understand more of what, what occurred in that process. And thank you for sharing your experience because that's what kind of tipped me off to go in this, to emphasize this, that yes, yes, you need to die to all that is unreal. Yeah, I got it. We all got it. You know, those of us who have made that journey, that death and rebirth journey. But why do we have to kill our bodies? These exquisite, you know, manifestations that we have, these, these um, glorious, uh, what did the beings refer to it as? It's, this is our communication device. This is, this is how we, this, this is where we feel that love and that resonance. You know, this, our, every cell of our body comes alive when we feel that love. So we're blocking love and saying, I have to die because I can't figure it out. Or I'm just a huge disappointment to everybody. I can't get out of this depression. You know, I get it. I was there. I know what that feels like. And yes, there is a death that wants to happen, but please don't kill the physical body. Don't end that because what happens is you just come right back again, give it another whirl. You're trying to escape, you're not gonna escape, but you can transcend. And we, we can't kill off our bodies and transcend. So this is something that, if, you know, if anyone's listening that, that has had these thoughts and, and you know, seriously considered it, Please reconsider, please reframe this, that yes, a death needs to occur, and it is the death of the ego, because this spirit wants to come through and wants to emerge and be that birth, that new birth that you want. So <clears throat> we're imagining, once I get rid of this body, I'm just going to be in you know, either nothing or I'm going to be with the light, and everything's going to be great again. No, the, what we're trying to achieve here, what, what we came here to wake up to is that we don't have to lose the body in order to accept this wholeness, our natural state, once again. So. I just want to add in as well, you know, because I think this, especially in, in, in spirituality, in 
the way things have been presented in the past, you know, that we have, can have that tendency. And I know for me, even when I did meditation and stuff, you know, I was somehow I picked up the impression the ego was bad. And I, I just want to in, interlude that the ego is not bad. It's just misguided. <laughs> it's like a child. It's like a child who's, who's just gone a bit, bit you know, he's ha who's having, I, I often call it like having a temper tantrum, you know, and, and Absolutely. you know, is, is wanting to run out into the road and just be in this chaos that's not, that's, that's ultimately not, not fulfilling. And, and so the God self or the parent is going, is pulling, pulling the ego back going, no, yeah. you have to come this way, you know, especially when life can seem so intense and confronting and challenging that it's really that parent self that's going, no, we're not going that way, you know, because that's not, that's not who we are, you know, this is, you come back to who you are. <laughs> yeah. But the whole world, the false reality is telling us that the ego is the ruler. So that's what that's what's very challenging as well is we watch everybody else and it's reinforced and it's like what's wrong with you what are you talking about this bullshit for you know you got to get with it and 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 get into the routine of this reality and it's and it's promoting get real get your head out of the yeah. cloud. were you told that as well as a kid <laughs> yes. I, I my father used to call me a headless chicken <laughs> oh Not yeah reality, I've heard it all yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've heard it all. Um, yeah, so the um, this is this is the conundrum now. This is what I what the the messages that I bring through the transmissions uh, from translating the resonance. Um, it's it's saying we're we're all coming up to the base of this of this wall um, that says you cannot traverse this wall. You can't get through it. You've tried, you, you know, and then this is where suicidal thoughts come in. I don't know how to get beyond this wall. Well, it, you don't get beyond the wall with the egoic mind. And that is who we've been giving all of our authority to. So what the being showed me is that um, we're just, we're hiding out in this very small spectrum of consciousness. And it is um, the intellect. This is what's reinforced in this reality um, that we live in a patriarchal world um, and the masculine uh, energies are, are lifted and held in high regard, the feminine not so much. Um, and all of this is representative of how much of our, even put it in, in um, hemispheres of the brain, we're taught See, I, I feel that I was born with um, both sides of my brain connected and talking, and most people are probably born this way. And then slowly over time, we're told to dismiss the right brain and just live here. And this is where the ego is master. But once we open up to the rest of our consciousness, the ego's like, wait, what? Who am I? And is having an identity crisis, right? Because it's no longer the ruler. It was never designed to be the ruler. But we most definitely need that ego component in a 3D physical world. So it's not about getting rid of it. You're right. Yeah. And that, and that it's more about that, that yeah, it's been ruling the roost, kind of uh, just everything you say, and it's been pulling off in its own direction. And so really what's happened is it's melding back in to the to the true essence self and then it has a grand purpose just like what you said to yes. be the experiencer and 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 to um to have the preferences and and to navigate but but not losing track of of the true self and allowing that to move through into yes. this this world of, of the senses um, and not disconnect from that or negate and you know that's the thing we learned in childhood as you say as we go into the left brain is we learn to negate and distrust the right. true essence self you know, we, turn, uh -huh. we learn to turn away from it and so all That's we're right. doing is learning to turn back into the self right. and to to make that and whether you know just like what you said that that willingness that that whatever brings us to that place of desire or willingness or whatever it is to finally go okay i surrender i'm mm -hmm. willing mm -hmm. i'm willing to, to do whatever it takes mm -hmm. show up every day on the on the mat or my prayer or walk in nature show up in, in 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 that which which brings me closer and closer in rather than take me further away i've done that 
Yes. It's been painful or it's got enough, it's got become uncomfortable enough or painful enough, or just even I've just, I'm just done. I'm just done. It's exhausting. And mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. so whatever gets us there. And, and right now, <laughs> we're, we're, as you said, the wall or, you know, the analogy of the wall, but the analogy that life is, is, is calling it, you know, we're calling it. Ultimately it's us, right? It's that's us right. that is calling, that's calling yeah. us, you know, back in home to that beautiful mother, feminine essence, caring, loving presence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that we're all yearning for. And that's, I mean, that's kind of the funny thing because everyone is getting what they're yearning for and yet they're going, ah, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mostly it's because it's, it's the unknown, right? We're so accustomed to being told what to think. And, and this is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to think. Stay in line with, with this narrow road, right? So we, we, start, we, we push all of these other natural aspects of ourselves, mostly the feminine. Um, uh, we suppress it. And then it, when we're being asked to turn back in that direction again, First of all, it's the unknown, and everybody told us not to do that. So it's all of these obstacles, seeming obstacles, that we have to overcome to turn back in the direction of our authentic self. But it's also, uh, after much unraveling and working with these beings coaching me, uh, which is what I call conscious evolution now, where you, you can, and the ego is invited into this conscious evolution. So it starts to find its place um, in a, a conscious evolutionary process. And so what we find is that we work on all of these misunder, we dissolve away and heal all of these misunderstandings from this lifetime. And then we start to dig into other lifetime resonances you know that start to pop up and appear and then we have that core wounding of the disconnect from the mother and that is when we get to that level of of clearing and healing that's when we have this amazing opportunity uh, for the mother to re-emerge and marry with the spirit uh, the maya say the we're bridging Human beings are designed to be a bridge between uh, the heart of heaven and the heart of earth. So the father and mother, when this is open, they can remarry again. And, and of course, there's so much symbology here. This could be thought of as the left and right hemispheres, masculine, feminine. This wedding can take place now if we're sacred engaged marriage. with it. Yeah, and sacred and, marriage, what's called yeah. sacred marriage. Mm -hmm. And then the birth. When the marriage happens, you know, if you want to put it in this in Christian terms, and, and I do get this in Christian terms, maybe it's my overlays from this life, uh, but probably a lot of other lifetimes overlays of, of Christianity. And um, that's just my particular orientation. It doesn't mean I'm identified with it. Um, all religions have these beautiful, exquisite roots, you know, with what is true uh, and actual. And so what happens in Christian terms is this is when uh, the divine child can be born, reborn to where it's whole again. And we have all of our components. We have the mother and the father and, and the, the Christed spirit once again, which is our natural state. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, lovely, lovely. And and what you're talking about, that heaven and earth as well, is part of that Kundalini awakening or what's called that. Um, when all the when when the channel becomes open and receptive and, and we earth we're grounded and earthed, we're we're accepting our belonging to this body, to this earth, to this yeah. mother, and this 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 expansive connection to the universe, multiverse, to the Godfather um above and 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 yeah to being that beautiful christed sovereign being um, an embodied, yeah an embodied service. soul, mm -hmm. embodied soul most, yeah most of our souls are you know we're we're operating in these bodies a lot of uh, you know people in the collective so wounded and so um um 
fearful that they they find it very difficult or challenging to um, to make their way back to this unless they're informed of it or um, I mean and that's why embodied souls need to be speaking about these things as much as possible um, people might usually do reject it you know who are uh, in that mode of defending um, the persona defending the 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 egoic mind um, but if we if we just step up and be courageous enough to speak it no matter what um, onslaught <laughs> judgments come at us that that's key now so we need more and more and more people stepping up to to be authentic and share this in, in speak from an embodied state so that there are examples of how what what you know people will just look at it and hear you and they might go into a reactionary motive i'm supposed to judge this and laugh at it but the seed is still there they they remember they will remember energy something was different with that person something was really different yeah sometimes you know we just it's just in kind of layman's terms if i'm just kind of because i think that's one of the things we do isn't it we look for how do you communicate how do you relate knowingnesses and experiences in 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 ways that can um filter through <laughs> that, can, that can that can connect the dots somehow or create an ignition or a seed as you say or whatever it is and it's a beautiful fascination you know with the human and this dance you know when we really make it you know when we're at that place where 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 it becomes more just curiosity and 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 you know when we have that healthy esteem reconnected yeah then being of service then it's like well how do i language things or you know what can what can land for somebody whether it's an experience or a languaging or whatever it is a, so a sound frequency etc 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 and everyone's different in how and how that may be and what will land for one person or another but one of the things that i say sometimes is um oh where's it gone now <laughs> <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> oh, what was that again? <laughs> well, remind me, what were you just talking about before I opened my mouth? Oh, now you're going to put me on the spot. Now I have to remember <laughs> what I was talking about. Oh, the la talking about the language, um, you know, how finding the right ways to say things yeah so yeah one thing to say is um you know what do we all well, what really inspires us and what inspires us no matter how somebody looks really truly is when they're just so comfortable in their own skin yeah isn't that the most inspiring thing isn't that something yeah. deep within all that we want you know yeah that you just want to feel comfortable in your yes. own skin yes yeah that's a great way to say it because that's embodiment when when yeah. you are around someone who feels comfortable in their own skin then you can feel that soul is present yeah and you can feel they're not trying to be anything more or less they're just right. so in their own and i think that's uh, you know the artists you know you can think of you can think of singers and and the, the music, you know, that, that you, you just know when somebody's on the stage and, you know, the crowd there is the icing on the cake, it's nice, but they're not there for the crowd. They're there for the music, the connection, the passion, the feeling, right. the joy, and they're just, they're just allowing themselves to be witnessed in it. So, yeah. <laughs> and then everybody gets to do whatever they want with it, but it, they're not caught up in the crowd so much, you know? There's right. such, a, such a direct connection to the fulfillment that they're getting within their own creative expression, passion. Oh, and then of course that's what the crowd loves because they're getting to witness it. That's right. <laughs> and be part that's of it. That's right. And mm -hmm. and I I got to the beautiful thing that came out, you know, one of the many beautiful things that came out of the Kundalini experience in 98 was for you know 15, 10, 15 years, I was up on stage singing mostly other people's music and you know dance music top 40 and let's rock you know which is fun and, and but um what happened when i had the experience was um 
you know, I was on the couch for like three days, just like wiped out. Like I didn't know anything. I didn't know. I slept most of the time. When I came out of it, there's a story in my book about it, but I, I accidentally struck this zither that was on a on a shelf and um, three or four notes rang out and I, it just like filled my whole body. And it was like, oh my God, oh my God, what's happening, what's happening? Long story short, dusted off the keyboard and I started hearing music. And so long, longer story short, three CDs of music came out of my own original material and I hadn't written original music before. So then I got to experience what it was like to, to show up and learn how to be the music rather than be a performer. So lots of wonderful lessons there too. Um, and terrifying, absolutely terrifying to, you know, if you're in persona and you're singing someone else's song, if someone doesn't like the song, it's like, hey, I didn't write it. But when you're singing your own music that came from these angels and sharing it and being that vulnerable, that was a whole other set of strengthening and learning and, and opportunities to be courageous, to sing my truth at that point. Because the music was just about this dialogue with, with this presence. So it was, it was like um, love songs, but it wasn't love songs to a, another human being. It was a love songs to this presence. So that was a beautiful thing, a beautiful gift that came out of it. So how would people access those CDs? Do you sell them online or how, is there a way yeah, for people to download? I it's on all the digital sites, Amazon, iTunes, just under my name. If you do a search, Eileen Meyer. Yeah, um, that's. So I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to wrap up in the next few minutes. Just got, I got a client coming soon myself. So sure. just a couple of things that I'd like to. Uh, uh, one question and then one invitation. So the one question is. Have you discovered now, or have you, do you have a, a name? Not that you have to, but did they give you a name or a greater understanding? And I'm sure you could do a whole other conversation on this of the blue wispy tall beans. Which race of beans they are? Who is that family connection? <laughs> um, they have um, informed me that <clears throat> this is just call it angelic in nature, and to be very very careful about searching for names and identities in the world as you know it because you will be given lots of data in that way but be very careful go back to essence who are these beings and in the end we find out that it is more um, aspects of ourselves uh, that we're integrating and so i was comfortable with um angelic uh, uh light beings um, whenever I pushed for, but I need to know because everybody talks about and they get told who they're talking to. Why can't I know who I'm talking to? And they would, it would just be almost like this. So you can just feel the, the energy smiling, you know, like, yes, it's understood that, that, you know, you need those things from the 3D perspective but you don't really need those names and labels if you're feeling us and, and, and you're welcoming that presence without having a need to name it. And it's frequency. So, but with that said, um, there's, um, there's definitely a, uh, when I read about the, um, Arcturians being musically and frequency uh, oriented. Um, I just kind of lit up. I was also informed by Bashar um, years ago that, um, you know, there's a, a Syrian uh, influence there. A lot of um, cat 
lion beings. The, the li uh, lion, lion, the lion beings. Right? The li lion beings, the ones that, uh, and, you know, and I, I, that's where I, I, I just stop myself because there's, that's when you're getting back into um, mental data, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you get this stuff direct and, and it's, and you identify with it in frequency, um, I try to stay away from all the uh, labels, <laughs> name, rank and file, right? Yeah. Um, so I've had some I've had some confirmation of some of these things, but I, I I do as well like to stay away from labeling things and just to feel the essence of it. Yeah, and that, that can be a bit that can be a bit of the tricky terrain when one is awakening as well, and they're open up to more of that galactic and and fascination and interest and curiosity, which is awesome, but also. I see even in my own journey, there was a time to, to dive into things, check it out, have a look, and then let it go and right. step back. Because the ego, the ego will say, oh, sure, we don't need to be this person anymore. We can be from Sirius or we can be from the Pleiades, you know, and now that's our identity. Thank you. All I needed was an identity to grab onto, right? So in the end, we're returning to this connection to essence, to all that is, to the field, to the unified field. Uh, this is where this love and presence is. Th get to that source first and then bring it through and, and create your definitions from this restored space rather than grabbing onto data that exists already. So you will be informed though. It's not like you're gonna be left hanging. It's just that your mind, your, your, your being has to be reoriented first before you truly understand the multidimensional nature of life. It, the 3D versions are too small. They're too reduced. And if you attach to that, then you're, you're ignoring all this other data that could come through and inform us. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you for that. And how can people connect with you, reach you, or do you want to share anything else that you've got going on? And then I'd like you to finish with, if you're willing, is to actually sing or tone some frequencies to just tune into your channel and see what comes. How does that feel? Oh, I would that? love to do that, but I don't think Zoom... Um... It, it may not pick it up, but you know, we'll hold the intention. Yeah, it, 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 does, it, tra it doesn't translate well. I could also, um, you know, send you a, a song. Um, yeah, could, yeah, you can do that as well. And I can just add it on at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I've tried with Zoom to do this kind of. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a certain kind of setting that you have to do, and I haven't figured it out yet. But I would love to do that because that is what I'm being invited to move into. So that's uh, very intuitive of you. Mm -hmm. um, what was the questions again? I yeah, lost just, them. Yeah, just oh. again, just finishing off with how people can connect with you. Sure. Just the website. You've got a website? I do. It's koyopa-rising.com. K-O-Y-O-P-A rising.com. Koyopa is the Mayan word equivalent um, of the uh, Sanskrit word kundalini. So koyopa rising is the Mayan version of that. That's pretty much where you can find me. I have a YouTube channel uh, with messages on it, transmissions, translating infinity is the name of that. Um, and right now what I'm doing is um, primarily doing uh, private sessions and Zoom sessions. Um, I'm transitioning into creating small working groups, uh, moving away from social media and I think primarily for now working with the platform telegram.org uh, and um, I haven't yet really announced that yet, haven't fully decided on what that's going to look like, but that's kind of in the works because I've recently gone through a, another huge shift and downloads and okay, now we're doing this. Um, so it's always changing, but um, moving into a, a new way of sharing now. And then of course the, um, the experiencer dialogues and evolution of an experiencer uh, videos that you referred to in the beginning and should probably have you on on my mm -hmm. experiencer dialogues platform yeah would you actually what 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 is your definition of an experiencer for anyone who 
Yeah, I'm curious myself and also I'm yeah. just very curious. There, um, you know, there are people now who are creating these um, definitions, um, but primarily um, we could all agree that it's um, any kind of an experience that takes you beyond uh, everyday reality. So that can happen in the near-death experience, obviously, where you're taken beyond and shown and you understand, the, you're given the greater view. Um, and out-of-body experiences, contact with non-human intelligence, um, oh, what else, kundalini experiences. Um, they're now including the um, psychoactive um, you know, natural plant medicines. Uh, but it really, uh, the way I view it is it, unless it's transformed you, like you've had a transformational experience, you are not the same person as you were before um, in a benevolent way. Um, you know, unless that happens, then it just, it can be condensed into a dramatic story that we keep repeating, you know, and, and, and then make that our identity. My point in doing the evolution of an experience or series is I talk to people who, who clearly see that they have been evolved over time through these experiences. And then it's brought us to this space where we're talking to each other now, thank you very much. And, and we're sharing it and we're saying, we've arrived, it's time to speak up, it's time to share, it's time to come together in groups. We can't do this by ourselves. We need each other to support and encourage, inspire, and take us and expand us even further. And ground, ground these experiences through our voice and frequency and, and allowing that level of our beingness to be present on this, yeah. on this earth. Yeah. yeah, and mirror that to each other. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. <gasps> Yay! Yay. <laughs> it's, so good to, it's so good to be here now. <laughs> it is. It really is. <laughs> beautiful. Okay, I'm going to head off. It's been so okay. awesome, Eileen. Thank you so much. I'm so, I'm so grateful to have, have uh, come across you via lovely Janine and your experience, her video. I knew straight away I wanted to talk to you and hear oh, more about you. your story. And, yeah. um, and we've been growing our connection since on social media, Facebook, which I know you're talking about um, transitioning out of. So we'll see where, where all of that takes us. Um, but for now, really grateful for the connection. Thank you for sharing so much beautiful insight and wisdom and um, just clarifying beautiful languaging to clarify, especially, yeah, so many, so many different things in this video. So I think it's going to be really, really helpful and insightful. Um, yeah, for the people who get to watch it. So, amen, hallelujah, praise yes, us all. Yes, praise the Lord. It's been, it's been a real pleasure and an honor to be with you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. So what I say there is, I go, um, amen, hallelujah, praise us all. As yes, yes, I can hear <laughs> that part. Yes, absolutely. I'm on board with that. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Till next time, take care. Pieces of me are scattered around On tips of tongues and distant memories Of the ones who said, the ones who said they love me And pieces of me can be found In a dungeon of forgotten dreams caught in a net
piece of me that shines like a light Born from my darkest nights You smile upon, you smile upon and hold Piece of me kissed by the fire like a lover under your disguise. Will you let me stay? Let me stay inside. I have been cast aside. I have been the hero. Now here I stand. 